guys, it's Jessie V, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about a very, very strange case from history from the early 1900s about these two girls who claimed that they were able to talk and play and hang out with fairies, and they actually took photographs of these fairies, and it was like worldwide news, everyone freaked out, and I do have those photos to show you, and it's just a very interesting story that I can't believe more people don't talk about, and it combines it's two of my favorite things fairies and just weird stuff from history. So I'm just excited to tell you guys this story today. Before I get started though, last call for Valentine's Day mystery boxes. We're almost sold out. Thank you guys so, so much. There are golden tickets hidden somewhere amongst them. I will link it down below for you. I'm actually still wearing one of the necklaces that come in the box. It is a heart with a different color jewel, just depending on which box you get. I love this one because it's kind of like a sapphire color and I love deep blues. But yeah, yeah, link down below. Okay, so we're just gonna jump right into today's video. This case is called the Cottingley Fairies. During World War I, a 10 year old girl named Frances moved from South Africa to England to stay with her aunt and uncle while her father fought in the war. She and her 13 year old cousin Elsie would often play together in the large garden by the house. And on July of 1917, both girls ran into the house soaking wet. Their shoes were completely completely soaked, covered in mud, and they said it was because they had been playing with fairies in the backyard. They then asked if they could borrow Elsie's father's camera to go and photograph them. So he just thought they were joking around, he laughed, you know, just assuming they were using their young imaginations, and, they, and he showed them how to use the camera. And so an hour later, the girls ran back to the house completely giddy and excited, and they declared that they had successfully taken photos of these fairies. Now, even though Elsie's father didn't believe them, he decided to go and develop the photos that night. And he saw that in the photo, Francis was indeed posing with fairies. And this is that exact photo. And he didn't believe it right away. He thought that the picture was some kind of trick, but the girls kept saying that it was completely real. He even said there appeared to be bits of paper in the photo, but the girls denied that as well. Like the father was literally like, hey, it looks like those are paper cutouts. And the girls were like, no, that's real fairies. Then the girls took a second photo a month later, showing Elsie with a gnome this time, but the father still treated the images as a joke and just filed them away. However, Elsie's mother had this very strong belief in the supernatural, and she was actually very intrigued by the photos. She actually thought they were real. And in 1919, she attended this lecture on spiritualism. She brought the photos with her and showed them to the speaker, and she asked him if he thought the fairies in the photos were real. Well, the speaker brought the photos to a photographer named Harold Snelling who examined them. And this is an actual like quote from him. He declared the photos were genuine, unfaked photographs of single exposure, open air work, show movement in all the fairy figures, and there is no trace whatsoever of studio work involving card or paper models, dark backgrounds, painted figures, etc. So in other words, he verified that the fairies in the photos were real. The photos began circling all over the place in newspapers, articles, magazines, etc. And the girls were then urged by the people to go and take more photos of the fairies, obviously, because if they're claiming to have real fairy friends, why not take more photos of them? So they did. So in August of 1920, they went and took three more fairy photos. Here are the new ones, Francis and the Leaping Fairy. The fairy is leaping up from the leaves below and hovering for a moment. It had done so three or four times. Then we have the fairy offering a posy to Elsie. The fairy is standing almost still, poised on the bush leaves. An interesting point is shown in this photograph. Elsie is not looking directly at the sprite. Then we have fairies and their sunbath. This is especially remarkable as it contains a feature quite unknown to the girls. The sheath or cocoon appearing in the middle of the grasses. Fairy observers of Scotland in the New Forest, however, were familiar with it and described it as a magnetic bath woven very quickly by the fairies and used after dull weather. So let's talk about the controversy because yes, while millions of people believed in these fairy photos, there were a number of folks who didn't. 
skeptics noticed many problems with the images, and the obvious one was that the fairies looked like paper cutouts. Now, let's not kid ourselves here. When I was showing you guys the photos, I'm sure you looked at them and were like, these are not real. They look like paper, they look like cardboard, these cannot be real. Which obviously is what I thought too when I saw them. For instance, in the first photo, why is Francis not looking at the fairies? The girls claimed they were so used to the fairies that they often paid them no attention. And why does the second fairy from the left not have wings? And in the second photo, why is Elsie's hand bizarrely elongated? In the fourth photo, why is the fairy dressed in the latest French fashion? But still, despite these problems, like despite people pointing out all the wrong things in the photos, people still believed them. And much of this belief might be attributed to the context of the times because by the end of World War I, the English were emotionally bruised and battered by four years of unrelenting bloodshed. They seemed to be in need of something that would reaffirm their belief in goodness and innocence. And they found this reaffirmation in the fairy photographs of Francis and Elsie. So basically, the people had just gone through the war, they were feeling awful, beat down, depressed, sad, and these photos of these beautiful beings made them feel happier, it gave them something to believe in. And so for that reason, I can understand why they would try their best to believe as much as they could, even though, I mean, these photos, they look, they don't look real at all. So yes, in the end, they were debunked. It was not until 1978 that James Randi pointed out that the fairies in the pictures were very similar to figures in a children's book called Princess Mary's Gift Book, which had been published in 1915, shortly before the girls took the photographs. And then finally, in 1981, Elsie Wright confessed that these photos were, in fact, a hoax. They were faked, they were just paper cutouts. She explained that she had sketched the fairies using Princess Mary's gift book as inspiration. She had then made paper cutouts from these sketches which she had held in place with hat pins. So the truth finally came out many 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 years later when these girls were very old. And yeah, I just find this story really intriguing because of the many many years that people believed them. I feel like if stuff like this came out nowadays, right away it would just be debunked. No one would believe them. But the thing with photography back in the early 1900s, the late 1800s, people really believed anything. So yeah, if you guys want me to do more videos about hoaxes from way back in time, I would love to do that. I find it so, so interesting. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget if you would like a Valentine's Day mystery box, I have linked it down below. But I hope you have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!